Good afternoon, everyone. This is Matt Hardy from Columbia Business School and the Head of Programs and Social Enterprise here at Executive Education. Thanks very much for joining today. Again, that's a picture of me. Hi, I'm Matt Hardy. I'm Head of Programs and Social Enterprise here at Executive Education at the Business School. I oversee our training and development programs for nonprofit leaders in both open enrollment programs, such as, such as this course we're going to talk about today, the Developing Leaders Program as well as a suite of other programs designed for nonprofit leaders, linking them with the business school faculty. Okay, so this is gonna be our agenda for today. We're going to talk about the program, um, the admissions process, and then we'll leave time at the end for Q&A. Um, in regards to the program, we'll talk about is DLP the right program for you? Um, the schedule, the curriculum, as far as the admissions process, application requirements and tips, um, our admissions process, decisions, notifications, requirements for tuition and financial aid. Thanks very much. And please be sure to use um, the comment section and the question section to post questions um, in this in, in, the, in the box and we'll get to it by the end. Um, we'll, we'll leave about 10 minutes at the end of the session. Okay, so is DLP, the Developing Leaders Program, the right program for you? So we'll talk quickly about the intended audience and then also your time and capacity to attend the program. Uh, okay, so folks that have attended in the past. Now, DLP is really designed for current full-time nonprofit leaders that are likely to join senior management teams responsible for the mission and strategy of the organization. Um, you have some management responsibility currently, and I'll, I'll speak a bit to that uh, in a few seconds why that's a requirement, um, but you are um, in a unique position in that you are kind of the liaison between potentially frontline staff or additional staffers and the challenges that they face um, and then with senior leaders who are responsible for the mission and strategy. So in many ways you are feeling pressure beneath you and above you um, in guiding uh, the programs and services um, and ultimately the mission that you um, are serving. Some titles to give you a sense here and the distribution of titles for participants um, from past iterations of the, of the Developing Leaders Program, Director, Program Director, Director of Operations. You'll see here Executive Director and that's often for um, EDs of smaller nonprofit agencies or those that cannot commit to the senior leaders program, which is a far more intensive, um, longer, greater commitment of a program. It's you know, one week per month for four months as opposed to one week. So we will see some executive directors, but typically they're from either smaller organizations or those that simply just cannot commit to a larger, um, larger course, associate directors, program managers, and down the line. Um, Titles can often be misleading depending upon the size of your agency or organization. So that's not really a, um, a major point for us in the admissions process, and I'll speak more to that in a moment. But really, um, are you someone that is managing staff, volunteers, various constituencies, um, and have management responsibility, and are um, reporting up to maybe senior team members um, uh, of, of the organization? So is DLP the right program for you? And again, if you have questions more about um, requirements or experience or backgrounds, please be sure to include that in the comment box. The schedule, it is full time um, for a full week and we do start on Sunday. Um, the day typically runs between eight and five um, p.m. each day with the exception of Sunday and Friday. Um, we start in the afternoon on Sunday, we end by uh, one o'clock on Friday. Um, it does include breakfast and lunch. And there is the expectation that you attend um, each session um, and all sessions for the week. Um, we recognize it's a major time commitment. It's difficult to get time out of the office. It's difficult often what we hear from our participants, even just to take a vacation. And now you're asking your supervisor for a full week out of the office. We understand, um, but we do believe in the immersion model of the course, which has been running now for over 10 years with its current faculty director, Professor Joel Brockner. And it's really been um, a wonderful program that I've been a part of for the past eight. So the schedule is by design. Um, it, 
it's immersion, it's immersive, it's full time, and it is a major commitment. Content, we typically cover two topics a day. So there'll be three hours in the morning, let's say on leading change or managing change, and in the afternoon, um, you might have a session on marketing. Um, the sessions are taught by and large by full-time tenured faculty members of Columbia Business School. Um, they split their time between their scholarship, teaching in the MBA, MS, or PhD programs here at the school, as well as executive education, which are our non-degree certificate programs. Um, and these will be Columbia full faculty teaching in their in the sessions, and they're really drawing upon their research and their scholarship to inform um, the content that they will be um, in, in many ways tailoring to a nonprofit audience. Assignments. Typically each session, so if we have two sessions per day for roughly five days, that's 10 sessions, um, you typically will have a reading or two per session. Um, there'll be uh, readings, assignments, articles. Um, we like to position this as a graduate level course, but if you have attended graduate school in the past, we're not expecting you to read 200, 200 pages per Per topic area, it will have to be one or two articles um, of a reasonable length or case that will be used in the session. So all the assignments that are required will be referred to or used during the session. And then if there are additional readings for reference, they'll be provided afterwards. But any assignments that are required for, um, for the session will be used. So we make sure that we're not um, wasting anyone's time. And then you'll see 360 survey here. 360 survey is a leadership assessment survey that we use in this course and others, as well as at the MBA and the MBA program to assess your um, capacity and behaviors in management and leadership. It's roughly 60 questions. Um, you will complete it as well as your supervisor, peers, and direct reports. Um, you will get feedback from each of those layers in a exhaustive report provided that data back to around your perceived competency across 60 measurable behaviors. Um, you'll then have a one-on-one -on -one executive coaching session with an executive coach that we draw upon either from the business school or teacher's college, which has a coaching certificate program. And you'll digest and unpack that 360 survey and focus um, on a few things that you can take away from that and do differently um, once you exit DLP. So in other words, you're going to get an actionable list of items that you can take away from that feedback and use back in your office um, the following Monday. Benefits. Um, this is primarily a leadership and management development program. Um, and we think about that really at, th in, at three levels. Um, leadership of self. So through reflection and self-analysis, um, where are you in your arc of, of leadership development? Um, what are you doing well? Um, what could you do better? And each session will help you focus on either that layer, so leading yourself, leading others. So you will have a session on teams and, and leading teams. Um, what are your interpersonal skills and how, to, how do you um, bring together and lead collective viewpoints and inputs um, towards an, an objective or goal? Um, so there will be content in that area and that will also be part of your 360 survey. And then leading the organization or leading strategically. Um, how do you um, continue to support the um, efficacy and efficiency of your organization and the way in which it's operating in the current environment and your communities that you serve? And how can you participate and influence conversations at a strategic level uh, for your nonprofit organization? So just to recap, um, when we think about leadership in these, at these three levels, it's leading yourself, it's leading others, and it's leading the organization. Um, finally, uh, this program is really a unique opportunity to connect with other nonprofit leaders at a similar stage in their career. Um, you'll be able to have discussions at lunch, at breakfast, and in small working groups around the challenges that you face in your respective agencies. And what you can learn from each other is often as valuable as what you can learn from our faculty. Um, these will be other people that are facing maybe similar challenges, but in different slices of the sector. So we'll bring together art and culture, education, social and human service, um, and beyond to learn from each other. Uh, but these are all mission-driven um, 
staffers that are really trying to drive change um, in one way or another for the betterment of society. So you'll be with um, peers in that regard, and it's really a unique opportunity to, to meet with them that will be at a similar stage in their career. So admissions. Um, and again, if I've um, piqued your interest in a certain area that we've covered so far, please be sure to include that in the comment box. Um, the admissions process is all done online, um, and it's a fairly straightforward application. Now, a few things I'll recommend you do before you start the application, and one of them is to really um, look over your resume. If you haven't updated that in, in a good while, it would be good to revisit your resume. That will help us um, understand uh, your professional trajectory, um, your current role, um, what function you serve, and um, your management responsibilities. And second will be your personal statement. Um, and that's really going to be a, 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 key, a key point for us. And that gives us an opportunity to better understand as opposed to just a list of, of um, you know, functions you serve at your organization and where you've been in the past and your education history. Um, give us a much better sense as to why at this stage in your career you'd like to attend the Developing Leaders Program. And you can see if you go to our website, the, the button here to click apply now. Um, Update your resume, invest time into your personal statement. It should be roughly one page, you know, 250 words, not really much beyond that. And that's words, not characters. We're not looking for tweets. Um, give us a really good sense as to what you hope to learn from this, from this course, why it's going to be valuable to you in your career now and in the future, um, what you hope to bring um, to others in, in, in this learning experience. Because for some of you, I might imagine, and my experience tells me that this is often the case, is that it's been a good while since you've been in a formal learning environment such as this. Um, why do you wanna come back to that type of learning environment? You've had incredible um, on-the-job training and experience between um, the last educational experience you had and, and now. Um, and um, just to also note, it's not required that you either have a undergraduate degree or a graduate degree. We're looking for a combination of experience, um, current, current, um, current role, and your interest in taking the course. So those are not prerequisites. We do not require um, you know, letters of reference from former teachers or faculty members. We do not require um, anything from formal registrars. These are the two documents you need to provide to us. So when you think about that, make sure you give time and, and, and thought and effort into how you want to describe yourself to us so we can get a good sense as to why you want to take the course. And then finally, if you're going to be applying for tuition assistance, and I'll get to this in just a few moments, have your organization's 990 form um, handy. So you can quickly upload these three documents and you can complete the, the application in one sitting. Um, if you have your statement and resume in 990 ready to go before you start the application, I don't think it'll take you more than 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Um, if you're writing it in, in, in while applying, I think you know, sometimes it can time out or you could lose your connection. I really think you should save it to a local hard drive so you can cut and paste it into our online portal um, and, and make it a, a, an easy technically process, uh, an easy technical process for you to apply. Um, so financial assistance this is often um, a, a, a key question for folks and we understand why. Um, we offer needs-based tuition assistance. So organizations that have an operating budget of five million or less are automatically eligible. And now that's the organization's operating budget, not your program budget, not a department uh, budget. It is the overall operating budget of the organization is five million or less. The maximum amount of support, which is on a sliding scale, is 50%. So that would be half of the total tuition um, based upon the organization's operating budget. Um, if you have a Columbia Business School alumni in your network, this could be a colleague, a friend, a board member, a family member, anybody within your network that would refer you to the program and endorse your, 
your application, um, we would apply, given their alumni status, a 25% a 25% uh, discount to, to, your, to your enrollment. Now, note here, you cannot combine them, but whatever is the maximum amount of support, we will apply to your enrollment. So in other words, if because of your organiza organization's operating budget, you would only get 10% in assistance, but if you had alumni referral, we would apply the 25%. We would not apply 35% and combine the two programs. So it's one program of assistance, one is based upon the operating budget. The second is based upon alumni referrals. And then third, which a good number of you may be aware, is that uh, we have a number of foundation partners based here in New York City that support these, uh, the, the Developing Leaders Program as well as the Senior Leaders Program. Now, um, I'll, I'll go back one second. These foundation partners um, you likely have already received communication from us, um, noting your eligibility for tuition assistance. Um, these are the Clark Foundation, the Pinkerton Foundation, the Robin Hood Foundation, and Nonprofit New York's uh, Nonprofit Excellence Awards program also provides tuition assistance to participants in that, in that program. Those foundation partners and scholarships are managed. We facilitate that process. You do not need to reach out to the foundation. You should note in your application, if you are a current, if your organization is a current grantee, now current, you have to make sure that it's the current fiscal year, a current grantee of those sponsoring foundations, you would automatically be um, in the pool of eligible um, organizations for foundation support. Um, and again, is, it is not necessary for you to reach out to any of the sponsoring foundations because we manage that process with them um, after we receive an application. So our timeline. The online application is due Friday, October 4th. Um, admissions decisions and tuition, assist, tuition aid and scholarship notifications will be sent out by Monday, November 18th. Enrollment confirmation. So that means after we send you via email your enrollment and financial aid status, you then tell us if you are going to accept or deny your enrollment. There is no financial obligation up until that point. There is no application fee. There is no deposit to hold your seat. Once we know all the folks that are going to attend is, when, is, is, is after um, November 25th. Full balance of the tuition payments are due by December 27th. And orientation and pre-program work and assignments begin shortly after January. That will include um, the 360 survey. So you'll have to submit your raters who will be submitting the, the, the survey on your behalf. Um, and there'll be um, some online work to be done um, independently uh, prior to your arrival in March. We have some time now for questions, um, and I see some of them are coming in. Hold on, we're gonna pull them up. Great, so um, one question here. Will participants earn a certificate? Yes, so at the conclusion of the program, assuming that you've attended all sessions and completed all assignments, you will receive our certificate of completion for the Developing Leaders Program, which does count towards credit for the, the Certificate in Business Excellence, which is administered by the larger Executive Education Division here at the Business School. That certificate um, for Business Excellence does provide select alumni benefits of the Business School, which includes events and um, an email address and a few other a few other items. So we will receive a a certificate for this course, as well as credit for um, a, larger, a, larger, a larger certificate administered by our department. Um, one person asks, I, current don't, I currently don't supervise anyone. Can I still attend the program? So I think there's formal and informal management responsibilities at nonprofit organizations, especially those that are smaller um, in terms of headcount and, op and operating budget. And you might be a CBO with an operating budget of $500,000 or less, you have maybe five or less full-time employees, you maybe have some part-timers, consultants, and an army of volunteers that are helping support your mission. If in some way 
you are managing any of those constituency groups. Um, and it could be volunteers, can people you know, that are actually outside of the organization that are, but are supporting the organization. Um, I think that's relevant. So if you have, in some ways, informal management responsibilities, that's, that's fine by us. As, as, as long as your radar would be willing and able uh, to complete the feedback, then that works for us. If you still are kind of stumped and that you feel like you're not really supervising anybody at the moment, but maybe that's on the horizon for you, I suggest reaching out to us directly and having a conversation to see if it's the right fit. But when, when folks think about a supervision, there's kind of formal and informal um, management. And I think um, um, it, it's important to note that we recognize um, managing volunteers or um, you know, managing board members even um, can can be uh, you know a, a, a you know a management function. Um, so one one person asked, um, there is not an application fee. Just to reiterate, there is no financial commitment until you accept enrollment in the program, and you either accept or deny enrollment with full understanding of your financial obligation to the course, and there is no commitment prior to that point. Um, this program is only one week long. The other program that we offer is a senior leaders program, and that is four weeks. Often, um, potential applicants are debating between the one week and four week program. This info session is simply on the one week program, the, the, the developing leaders program for um, nonprofit professionals. Folks have asked, who are the faculty? These are the full time, um, tenured, by and large tenured faculty of the business school. Most will be from the management division. We will draw upon um, the marketing division as well. Um, but again, these will be um, full faculty that have been teaching at the university and the business school for many years and been teaching in the program for, for many years. Um, is there homework? I believe that we covered um, that there are reading assignments per session. Um, the time commitment, that's a good question. You know, I'd say probably per day, you might have um, an hour up to upwards of maybe two hours of readings or preparation before the next day, but you'll have plenty of, of lead time to prepare, to do complete readings, to complete assignments, to complete surveys, um, which are all done online um, prior to sessions. So, you know, I think you can expect a significant amount of work to prepare for um, the sessions and also to prepare for your 360, which will be the, the main feedback and, and uh, assessment uh, for the course. Um, so well, another question here, um, do I have to be sponsored by my organization to attend? That is the norm um, for um, our participants to be um, financially sponsored in some way by their organization to attend. They certainly have to endorse your time out of the office. So, you know, if, if, if they're financially unable to, to fully support your enrollment, some participants do pay out of their own pocket to attend. But at a point in the, in the application, you will see that you have um, essentially a green light from your supervisor to fully attend the program and that they've allotted you the time out of the office and to not be distracted with meetings or calls or questions from colleagues and, and and Steph, while you're on site, the expectation is you are um, fully unplugged from the office while you're on site and, and learning. Um, and this question here, just to reiterate about the three types of assistance, correct, none of them can be combined. So it's either you receive support based upon your operating budget, you were, or receive um, alumni scholarship from alumni referral from uh, an alumni of the school, or the foundation. You cannot combine them. The maximum support for operating budget is 50%. It is 25% for the alumni referral and the foundation scholarship range, uh, foundation scholarship amounts do range and they vary. So you would know um, which would be the maximum amount of support once you're notified of your admission status via email. And the question here about how does the peer networking work? Good question. Um, so there are some organic and formal networking opportunities. So that would be um, during breakfast and lunch, we would have 
Um, often we have focus groups during lunch or working groups during lunch that are interested in a certain area or topic. So for example, um, we, we allow participants and set up the kind of the space for them to convene around similar challenges or areas. So there might be a working table on challenges in the education swath of the sector, youth development, um, elder care, food insecurity. I mean, there could be various topics that we can survey and, and kind of aggregate um, folks with similar challenges, interest areas, or missions, and they can talk about those challenges maybe over lunch or breakfast. Um, we have a networking reception, um, which we combine with the senior leaders program. So we provide the opportunity with some activities for the two programs to connect um, and to hear from each other and, and um, what's going on in, in, in their respective worlds um, in regards to their nonprofit organizations and the sector. Um, and more formally, you will have a, a peer group that you will work with for the duration of the program. So we typically bring together, um, we try to have it as diverse of a, of, a, of a small group as possible in terms of representation from the sector and then backgrounds um, of about seven people. They'll be your peer learning group that you'll work with throughout the duration of the course. Um, you'll get to know each other very well. Um, and you'll hear from each other's challenges. You'll provide some peer coaching on challenges. You'll, you'll work through with them how to apply course content to your organizations um, and how to transfer or translate what you're learning from our faculty into your local environment. And I think that transfer and that translation is often one of the biggest challenges. You might have a faculty member that provides you with a framework to think about change, for example, or a framework to think about leading teams. And then how do I take that framework and ad adapt it to my organization, to my mission, to our organizational culture? And that's really where the rubber meets the road and the value of, of this course, because for every single participant, that transfer and that translation is going to be different. But you're gonna work with a small, a small group that you're gonna know well, roughly seven people, and you're gonna be having that conversation around the challenges to transfer, the challenges to application, um, and then strategize. How are you going to use this um, once you leave Columbia's campus? And how will you um, use it to the betterment of the people that you serve, the mission that you serve, but also for yourself? How do you grow as a leader and manager of your organization? Um, great question here. I want to get to them just before we wrap up in the, in the last two minutes. Um, if there's an unexpected emergency. We're understanding empathetic people. We get it. Something can pop up with um, a family obligation, a crisis bubbles up. Um, you know, we will work with participants um, to make sure that, you know, in good faith and in best efforts, they're completing all their assignments, but I just can't be there because you know, X, Y, Z happened at the office. We understand it happens and it won't be the first time or last time um, in DLP 2020. So we'll work with you on a case by case basis and that will be dependent upon how much time out, out of the office it would, it would require. Um, but we understand and, and we work with our participants that do have those challenges that unforeseen, unforeseen challenges or unpredictable challenges that pop up during the program. We'll, we'll work with you on that. And then uh, another question here, are there any testimonials from past participants on the program? Um, so we do have testimonials on the program website. You can um, access that in the same place you'd access the application. Um, you'll go through FAQs, you can see um, video testimonials, uh, uh, online testimonials for, for the program of past participants. And for the breakdown of day-to-day -day activities, you can also download the agenda um, from past iterations, so you can see the um, sessions that are covered, the faculty that teach in it. Um, by and large, we will um, repeat, let's say, the agenda that you will see. There might be changes to specific sessions dependent upon um, faculty, faculty availability, but we do know that Professor Joel Brockner, who's the former chair of the management division and an expert on leading change, will continue to serve as our faculty director, and he is responsible and tasked with the overall um, recruitment and administration of, of the program. Um, thank you to all of you. We're up here at 1230. Um, we have some next steps. If you have any um, specific unanswered questions, um, you can contact us. 
Um, you can put the online application by October 4th. Please do so by the deadline because we do start reviewing them shortly thereafter, and that includes the scholarship allocation process. And um, be sure to contact us if you do submit an application and don't hear by us, hear from us by Tuesday, November 18th. Um, thank you so much for your interest um, in the Developing Leaders Program. I hope you found this helpful. Um, our contact email here is execed.pse at gsb.columbia.edu. And someone from our team will be, will be back to you as soon as we can with your questions. Again, thanks so much. Take care.